side. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, I do not know what happened. So we're gonna pull over here where there's no one at. And I don't know if the bike died or what. What's going on? All right, we're gonna start with this up here so we can now see our speed because last video, this didn't work. But now we can see what's going on. <laughs> All right, you guys probably already know what bike I'm on. This is the Ghost Cat F 2.2 Pro. This is a 1500 watt motor in the back and it peaks at over 2000 watts because it has a 40 amp controller on here. The last video did really good. You guys probably know everything about this but there's more information that the company wants me to let you guys know. There's only like 50 of these bikes that got made and they mostly got sent out to reviewers, YouTubers, stuff like that. So people can give their feedback to the company. And if you notice on my last video, they're in the comments, they're replying to all your questions. So if you guys have a question, drop them on this video as well and they'll probably update you and let you know what's going on. I also have these pedals on here too. I'm not sure if they're gonna die. I just wanted to have a little bit of flair to this bike. These are the Redshift pedals. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for those but there's tons of stuff that you need to know so let's just get into it really quick and just in case you guys are very busy with what you do and you can't watch a 20 or 30 minute video which i understand i'll put everything on the screen right now that the company wanted me to let you guys know and if you have time though oh kitties oh i love kitties just let the video play like it i really appreciate it or just watch it if you just like e-bikes in general no okay i probably scared them with the, the bike it's okay let's just get out of here oh there's another one over there before i get into all that it's kind of funny that the display's working now you guys can see that oh oh okay when i hit the brakes it goes to zero i wonder if that's an issue that they need to fix and then when i'm off of the brakes it goes up to normal and it does look like it's working doesn't look like it's off it looks like uh, my phone takes a little bit to uh, catch up to the actual speed of the display up here. But other than that, it's working so far. Which brings me into my first thing is that if you guys order this bike, they already know about the display issue. And if you do have that issue, they are going to replace it for you. So you don't have to worry about it going out and you being out money or having to fix it yourself. They will replace it. I think that was the biggest question a lot of you guys had. You're just really concerned about buying the bike and be like, oh man, the display is garbage and it went out on Tell Happy TV and Mr. Central Driver's channel. And hey, we both keep those things in there. I'm not happy about the display going out, but the fact that the company will send you another one and they're working on a fix, so the next one that you probably get from the company is not gonna have this fluctuating issue, which is nice to see. On a side note, I'm really digging the Rock Bros bag that they give you that I did not install on my first video. I can see everything. I like having my phone right there. I trust it. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. And you can put the keys to the battery uh, in here as well and maybe some miscellaneous stuff. Another thing they're going to change on this bike is the fact that it is not made for people that are over six foot. Because even me at 5'9", my knees come up high. And I know Tell Happy TV said something about it as well. And it's just not ideal for big people. So they're thinking about moving it or shortening the crank arms just so it makes it a little bit better. But that's also going to make it worse for pedaling as well because ghost pedaling happens at like 14 miles an hour on this bike. If you put shorter cranks on there, they're actually going to turn faster rotation. So it's actually probably going to only go up to like 11 miles an hour maybe ghost pedaling so just something to keep in mind that it's going to be better for taller people but worse on pedaling let's see how it does up this hill okay well we can't go off of that now that's freaking out 24 miles an hour 25 i believe okay 26 all right so about 24 now we're kind of coming up to the top 24 miles an hour kind of a hill man that is great now we are at pretty much a full battery charge let me look real quick Voltage is 52 under load. Let's see how fast we can actually go. We're going downhill, 37. We got some cops in front of us. Let's see if they uh, mess with us or not. <laughs> and when I let off, we go up to 56 volts. So we're pretty much almost at a full charge, probably like 85%. I'll put the voltage chart up here so you guys can see that. I just keep seeming to get every damn light right now. I don't know what's going on with that. But I think that we're gonna have to blow through this once this car goes through and catch up to the cop. Another thing they mentioned is that they are going to be changing these grips 
which thank you because these grips are ass. I don't like them. I'm sorry. I'm just keeping it real with you guys. And they're also thinking about changing the throttle to something more of like a Suron. And I personally, I don't have a problem with this throttle at all. I just wish that the throttle wasn't this type of grip. It's, it's just garbage, but hey, if they're willing to upgrade that and maybe not charge us for it, that'd be kind of nice. Go cop, go. Let's go. <laughs> I might freak them out if I start pedaling because you got the lights that go back and forth on the pedals. They just shine all over the place. If you're looking back in the rearview mirror, you'd be like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, it is a nice, beautiful day out here, though, even though it's nighttime, you know, it's hard to see, but uh, it's, it's nice. The weather's great. I have a little minimal sweater on. I got some gloves. I feel a little tiny bit cold, but it's nice. It's not super hot yet, so I'm enjoying my time out here. I'm getting places super fast other than hitting all these damn red lights. But other than that, uh, great night, guys, and I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far because the next thing we're going to get into is that they are changing the kickstand on this bike. Now, I kind of argued that I wasn't a big fan of the kickstand being in the middle. Now, there are some pros and cons about the kickstand being in the middle, especially if you have, like, storage on this bike. But for this bike in particular, I feel like the kickstand should be in the back because all the weight of the bike is in the back. So I feel like that it should just be in the back. You get rid of it hitting the pedals because that was a huge thing. If you put the kickstand down and move the bike back, the pedals will come back around, hit the kickstand. It will start chipping the kickstand. And on top of that, it won't allow you to keep pushing the bike back. You'll have to lift the bike up kick the pedals out of the way and then you can kick kickstand up all right let's get on a main road should i stay in the street probably not a good idea i think we're going to go over this way we'll turn down this street i've never even came down this street on any of my youtube videos we just exploring today i don't ever come to this little uh place right here i don't even know what it is but we're just gonna take a little back road it's gonna take us over here to some stuff that i don't know got some carts back here some tents okay something else i should mention is that uh there is a delay in the throttle especially when you're moving pretty fast and the company said that they were working on fixing that to give not much of a delay which i think is nice because this bike to me is so fast and as soon as you let off the throttle and then get back into it all your momentum kind of goes away and then you just start losing speed until that power kicks back on so I'm a huge fan if they fix that throttle delay. There's probably some tuning on the controller that they got to do. That's not something we can do, but they could possibly do. I don't know if that's going to be in the next version, like the pre-orders that people are doing right now, but it would be nice. Now let's move on to our third or fourth thing. I'm not exactly sure how many I've said so far because I'm trying to pay attention to the road, go super fast, watch out for everything, and also make a video at the same time. <laughs> and I'm trying to just remember everything they told me. But I think they're going to fix the front fender, which is going to be super nice because that fender, after we went down those stairs, if you guys saw my video review, it was just sitting on top of the tire. And I knew that was going to be an issue. I'm really hoping that they get a full fender on there, or, and even if they do the half fender on the back, hopefully they have the connections that go to the front fork that keeps it from moving up and down. That would be a very nice touch. So we'll see if they do that or not but at least they're going to be fixing that. Now, some people had a problem with this, but I didn't experience it. But since this bike goes up to 400 pounds of a rider, people are having issues with the front suspension coming in contact with the front fender. Now, I can see that happening, especially if you take it off curbs and you kind of jump it a little bit. That's actually might would have happened when I went down those stairs. Now that I think about it, I bet you that the suspension came in contact with the front fender and that's what made it get smashed down to the tire. So they're looking at upgrading the front suspension, even though I personally don't care. Uh, the front suspension is good to me, but if you do do a lot of uh, heavy stuff on your bike, if you're jumping it and you're a heavier person, I totally get it. All right, we're going to dip in the street real quick. We got a fast e-bike. We can definitely stay up with traffic. Right now we're doing about 33 miles an hour. We can, of course, go faster than that, but I believe our battery is going down. This thing will definitely go quick, even though it is a 20 amp hour, 52 volt battery. But with all the power you have comes great responsibility of trying to save that battery. If I'm not mistaken, because I ride so many different voltage e-bikes and I believe the cutoff is 42 volts. And right now under throttle, I am pushing about 49.6. So you guys can see the chart. I'll put it up on the display real quick. But if I do let off, I'll tell you guys right now, it's going to go pretty high up. Yeah, so we gained about three volts. We're almost getting to three and a half volts 
after letting off. Holy moly, this is a dark street. Something I would like to talk about too, and I ride these bikes at night, because a lot of people don't. They do one video review when they're done. And I like to show how the lights look at night. And I gotta say, this headlight is badass. I brought an extra light just in case from Electric XP, the bike company, because this is one of the best lights I like for handlebars. And I was gonna compare it to this headlight, but I don't even think we need to compare it. I guess we will at one point if I remember, but I'm not gonna do it yet. I'm gonna turn in here real quick where I used to work. And I don't know, just kind of go ride around, bullshit. Let's go on the other side of the road. Live life dangerously a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can see people just uh, looking at the light like, what the heck? Oh, sorry. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I do not know what happened. So we're going to pull over here where there's no one at. And I don't know if the bike died or what. What's going on? Well, it's back, but what was that? Oh, it's just not gonna go because uh, pedal assist needs to be on. Huh, I didn't hit a button. That's super, super weird. Never seen that. All right, let's get back into it. I kind of lost my momentum there. I'm like, what the heck happened? That's not good because I'm like at the farthest point away from my house. Like, I'm super far. I'm probably about like six and a half, seven miles roughly, like away. Hey, what up, bro? <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> no, I'm just riding, doing a video. <laughs> Twelve seconds later. All right, man, dude, I'll, I'll let you go. Yeah, I'll see ya. Yeah, you too, man. Take care. All right, cool. I had to talk to one of my old co-workers. Well, he's actually very young. I'm the old one, but I haven't seen or came to this store in months, so just figured I'd kind of come in the area. I'm over here. Big old dip. Oh, it's looking like a dream. <laughs> I love how comfortable this bike is. I really feel like if I bought this bike myself, because of course the company sent it to me, I would put motorcycle tires on this thing instantly. It has enough power, it has enough speed. I would probably think about purchasing an extra battery as well, just to have one in your backpack. And then you could just hot swap it, you know, when you're out riding, and then you could double your range. Because I don't know exactly what happened just a little bit ago when the bike fully turned off. But we are seeing about 50 volts under load right now. I just, I really wish I knew what that was because that was a little nerve wracking. It kind of felt like when you have voltage sag that goes too low and it just cuts your power because it protects the battery. That's kind of what it reminded me of, but we weren't even that close to that happening. So no idea. Uh, are we flying? We're we gonna hit the street real quick bump bump nothing a little bit of noise from the front absolutely nothing oh the bike turned off again what is going on <laughs> why are you doing this to me all right well like i said they only made 50 of these and they're obviously working on issues i have no idea if it has to do with that display or the brakes it seemed like it happened when i hit the brakes or I don't know, unless there's like a wire that's coming loose or something, or it can't be overheating, that's for sure, because it is very, very cold out right now. So I couldn't tell you, but I gotta make sure I get back home. Another thing I should mention while we're gonna sit and wait for this long light, because there's a lot of traffic out right now, is that this battery right here, the 20 amp hour, it's gonna stay the same size, but they are gonna get it UL certified because as of right now, it's not. And I heard that sometime in May, they're going to be uh, getting that certified. So that's gonna be very nice because there's a lot of crackdowns on batteries. I don't think around here we're gonna have any issues. Oh crap, I'm in zero mode. But uh, you never know. Oh, here comes another hill. I got a huge running start at it and I'm doing 29 miles per hour up this thing. Dang, 30 now that we're at the top. We are definitely jamming. I'm just a little worried about the bike turning on and off on me. I don't know what that's about. It does give a little bit of a worrying feeling, but I'm pretty sure everything will be ironed out once these bikes start shipping out to you guys. I'm gonna make some moves right here, real quick. Gotta go over this way. Gotta take a little shortcut. Go, 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 we're gonna make it. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna come up this like super quick. Oh, it's like a dream. <laughs> I love the suspension, man. This thing is great. 
headlight needs to go up a little bit. Something that uh, most bikes do come with is a high and low beam. This one doesn't have it. It's just a standard beam. Great enough. It looks like a high beam. I love the fact that it is decently wide so I can see way over here. And then I can see on this side if, you know, we had a street over here, but it's blocked by this gate. And I'm just jamming right now. What I want to try though real quick is I'm going to slam on the brakes again and I'm going to see if the bike turns off because that's the last time I think it turned off is the brakes got slammed. So one, two, three. No, it didn't turn off that time. I was just wondering if it had to do something with the brakes. Huh. What about the horn? <laughs> nope. It's not turning off right now. I noticed that on our main display, we gained two miles. Hey! <laughs> it's doing something over here. Um, I have done 9.3 miles. All right. <laughs> That's a BMW. 9.35 miles so far. And uh, we've been holding a good speed. Our max speed has been 37. Our average speed has been 14. I did stop for a while. I've been out here for 40 minutes. And our voltage right now, I got to go back and check that out. I should also check current because we haven't checked that out yet. Um, 52 volts. All right. We're still doing pretty good. We got another hill we can come up. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Let's see how it makes it up this one. This one's nice and gradual getting up there. And I'm pretty sure it's going to do perfectly fine. We're doing 31 miles an hour right now. This is the speed that a stock Super 73 would do at a full battery charge. And I'm talking about a $4,000 bike. We are on a $2,000 bike. Now, I still like Super 73 bikes, and I don't really have anything bad to say about them other than their price. Their price is garbage. This thing is coming in at $2,000, and we are going up that thing at like 28 miles an hour. No issues. Where, where, where am I? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know a lot of people out there are going to say like, oh, the battery just needs to be bigger, or this should have been more beefier. You should put that on there. But that all keeps adding weight onto the bike. And what's so fun about this bike is the torque and speed it has out of it for how lightweight the bike is. It's so nimble. It really does feel kind of like a Suron or a Talaria. It just being able to go from, you know, sidewalk to sidewalk, street to sidewalk, whatever. It's just nice. I feel like it just handles great too. Like I said, I would just change out these tires. That's all I'd probably do because I don't want to worry about getting a flat. Ooh, all right, we're going to come around this little, this little thing. Hopefully no one's uh, walking because we're jamming. I don't know how many times I said we're jamming, but we're jamming. Woo you can see the angle I'm getting the bike at. Oh, look at, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> getting a little too low there. Felt like the pedals were going to hit the ground, but the pedals are actually pretty high off the ground. It's not something you have to worry about. They're actually, they actually need to go farther down, and we already talked about that. They're thinking about moving them. Um, but I think all they're really going to do is just shorten the cranks because they already have the location of them. But I feel like if they were to redo this frame again it would have been better to make the frame in the middle where the cranks add up to like just a little bit lower and then they could keep the same crank length and not have to worry about shortening them because i'm telling you once you shorten them it's going to rotate so much faster in a short amount of period if that makes sense dang look how dark it is and look how much i can see if i were to turn off this light right now it's going to be a perfect time to show this light holy moly oh go back on go back on i can't see okay <laughs> Woo that was bad all right let's try to uh turn this other light on there we go so those are with both lights combined if i turn the stock headlight off this is how the aftermarket one looks i actually think that their headlight looks better than this but let me make sure it is all the way turned up because sometimes it's a little lower than it should be one two wait all right so that's that and then let's turn the other one back on dang that is brighter the stock headlight is great now it isn't as wide like in the front and it looks like the aftermarket one went out a little bit farther so it adds to this light but this one is definitely uh good to see and i'll show you guys the brake light as well and we still gotta try out these uh, pegs Oh, and one thing, remember the kicks in I was telling you about? The bike leans up too far for or too far over. I'm not a big fan of that. It's not gonna fall though. I just don't like how far it is. But that brake light is dope. Definitely bright too. I like it. All right, let's get back on the way. Cause it is very chilly out here. I think I'm gonna take the dirt path back and we're just gonna see how it is at nighttime. What I should be trying though is I really wanna try out these pegs. <laughs> 
These pegs on the back aren't made for standing on. They're just made if you carry someone and they just rest their feet on the back. But I kind of want to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do this. Oh, dang. Oh, this bike will definitely wheelie, but I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am too old to be uh, breaking something on my body right now. <laughs> I work a full-time job other than YouTube. I can't uh, afford to get hurt. Dang it, I could have went. I could have went. All right, not a single light out here. We're gonna rely all on the light that they put on this bike. So far, so good. I gotta jump it up just a little bit. There, I can see everything. This is great. Unless something runs out from the trees, I ain't gonna be able to see that in time, but you ain't gonna see through the trees anyway with any type of light. Look at this. It's so comfortable. I absolutely love this bike. I legit feel like I'm sitting on my Suron, just not going as fast, because the Suron does go like 45 or so, but it is just, the comfort is there. It's too smooth. It is a little hard to see, I will say, when uh, you're turning though, because the light is a nice cutoff. I'll take that though, because most of the time you're gonna be riding straight, but when I turn, you really can't see too well. Oh, still jamming. I can hear that uh, front fender hitting. They'll fix that. Oh, why is this truck here? Ooh. All right. Probably nowhere else to park, I guess. Just come way back here, take a nap in the truck. I get it. A lot of truck drivers be sleeping. So quick update. Uh, I still got a ways to go before I get back to the house, but we're looking at 47 volts under load and 11.9 miles. So like I said, we are really killing this battery because I am just hauling ass everywhere I go. Make sure guys, if you do like this bike and you're watching this video because you're really on the edge of buying it compared to some other stuff out there, highly recommend it. I told you guys when I recommended a very good bike in 2023, and that was the Ride One Up Rev One. Hands down, still one of the best bikes out there, especially for storage and putting like a secondary battery on it. I still think that's a great bike, but it doesn't compete on the torque that this bike gives. It really doesn't. And the comfort is pretty good on the Ride One Up Rev One as well, but not as good as this one. Trust me, this thing is hands down way way better and then maybe you're thinking about buying the goat e-bike well i personally have not reviewed one of those and i think the only reason why i have it is because they did hit me up last year but they wanted the bike back if i remember so i didn't reply because i don't want to box a bike back up and ship it back because it's been a hassle in the past but maybe down the road we can you know try out one of those i heard those are really good bikes so i can't really compare the two I can, however, compare the Rev GTX. Did I say Rev? I meant to say Rave GTX. That bike is just gorgeous looking, or at least the one I have because it's chrome, it's limited edition. I really liked how that frame looked, but it also felt cheap. It just looked apart. It had some really good components like the tires and stuff like that. They were better than this, but still nothing is comparing to the comfort and the torque that you get out of this bike. The Rave bike was not that torquey at all. It has some decent top speed, but it didn't really get up to speed very fast. And this is where this bike is just shining, man. I am down. You can see up here uh, as it gets going, our battery bars or energy bars, they go down to like three. And one thing I told you, I got, I forgot. I, I wanted to see what the current was from the amps of the controller. So we're pushing about 26 to 28 roughly. That's not bad, especially being down a uh, low percentage. I'm pretty sure we already passed the halfway mark on the battery. We're probably pushing like 40% or something like that. Let's see, I'm trying to get, okay, I wanted to go back to voltage. There we go. So 49 volts without being on the throttle. And then when I get on the throttle, about 46 volts. So you don't want to push this bike to the point where when you're on the throttle, it goes down to 42 volts because then the bike will actually legit cut out. And over time, you could ruin your battery by dropping it down. So to avoid that issue and still be riding your bike all the way down to the last 5% of it is just turn down the power and don't use so much. So if I got this bike down to where it said like 43 volts, I'd probably put it in like mode two or mode three and I would just keep an eye on that. So just something I recommend. Great bike though. Make sure please use the links down in the description to buy this bike. I'm really promoting this bike a lot because I don't always recommend you guys buying a bike out there every single video. I always just say the choice is yours. I like it or I don't like it. 
This one I absolutely love for the price and you guys are not gonna be disappointed. Just a few things the company needs to change and I already went over it. And just again, I will put it on the screen one last time so you guys can check it out. Just to get it fresher to your memory if you are if you guys are gonna pre-order this right now by using the links in the description on what they're gonna change and what you should expect when you get your bike in. So on that note, guys, I am home. I will check the voltage in front of my house and then I'll let you guys go. All right, after letting off the bike, it goes up to 49.2 volts. It's gonna go up a little bit, probably to like 49.7 ish. Cause it always kind of goes up like 0.5 of a volt after you kind of let off for a couple minutes. It's only been a few seconds. And I'll put the chart on the screen so you guys can see where our battery's at. So I'm assuming, I'm gonna say like 40%, but I could be wrong. And I did 14.28 miles top speed 37 still and i've been out here riding for almost 53 minutes so there you guys go think about buying it again everything's down in the description drop a comment a like anything that helps the channel really appreciate it see you guys true me peace make sure to turn these off if you guys buy these if you don't turn them off even though they do turn off by themselves they will still run down because they'll be on standby mode and i've learned that the hard way many times